Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to episode eight of the SMB Talks. And uh, I'm so excited to be here. It's been a slow week this week. Uh, but yeah, Friday, uh, last week, we couldn't meet because uh, some one of my guests couldn't appear on the show. But it's fine. Uh, I always needed to take a break to evaluate what kind of guest I want to bring on to the show and what kind of conversation I want to have. So it's here onwards, it's going to be a mix of both entrepreneurs, SMB owners, plus some influencers coming on the show. So this month is going to be awesome. I'm so excited about it. So today I have a good friend of mine, uh, Naina Hiranandani coming on the show. Uh, you know, uh, the reason I started this show was to introduce you guys to exciting people, right? So today, I have a perfect example of an exciting person. So she uh, she wears a lot of hats. She is a creative person who runs a startup. It's not a startup. Actually, it's been around for some time called Surf Coffee. You know, we all know that dating is kind of tough and you there are a lot of apps and things like that. But these guys, they have cracked the code to get the right people together. So it's a bespoke uh, offline dating service. So let me just introduce, uh, it's going to take a while because she has done a lot of things. So she is the co-founder and CEO of Surf Coffee. Uh, she has done prior to her entrepreneurial journey, she started her career as a journalist with the Indian Express. Uh, then she was with Ogan Publication. She has written for publications like L India, etc. She has contributed to GQ, Sommelier India, Indian Express, Tweak India, and Hindustan Times, etc. So she has also consulted as a content director for a pan-India brand consulting and PR agency that builds and grows luxury lifestyle brands. So she has spoken at multiple uh, international forums like Global Shapers Hub, Mumbai, Creative Morning, and various radio channels like BBC London and things like that. So without further ado, let, let's have Nena join us. Hi, Vivek. Thank you for having me. Hey, hey, it's such a pleasure uh, to have you here. So, uh, Nana, I don't know whether you have seen any episodes before this. Uh, so, we have, uh, I started this very recently, a uh, month ago. Uh, because, you know, uh, the times are really tough. Everybody is struggling with a lot of issues and people are losing jobs and things like that. So, I wanted to start this as a forum where I get exciting folks like you come in and share their story and you know so that everybody even uh the beginners uh career big people are big starting the career etc can get something out of this so yeah. uh welcome welcome here welcome here and uh, i Thank hope you, you are stay, staying safe and doing well right now yeah absolutely we've been uh working hard actually from home <laughs> so okay. there's been no no downtime i haven't acquired uh 20 new hobbies in this lockdown because <laughs> frankly it's just been it's been good um you know by god's grace can't complain right uh, yep, i think yep, yep. people were relevant even in this time and i think there's a lot of things we did right which I'll, I'll probably address as we go along that also kind of made us you know covid prepared in many ways so right, right. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually interesting time. Uh, some of the people I had, Bisham from the Man Company, uh, the other day, and he was saying that even the initial days were struggling. Now they have come back, and it's going two hundred percent. You know, so a lot of brands are doing good. Uh, uh, you know, like you mentioned. So let's yeah. let's. It will be a curated set of questions, uh, and I'll throw one at one at a time. You can sure. take it as you wish, and it's just a casual talk, so you can just share as much as wisdom uh, we have all the time here right okay. so my first question will be you have always been when i'm looking at your profile on linkedin and i've been following you for some time uh, you have been always uh, aligned to content creativity with your experience with magazine like l and all that how come right. this this shift into entrepreneurship so how did right. that happen so, correct so like you rightly said i always have been a creative person. In fact, that's what I studied as well. I did journalism. I did creative writing. In fact, I used to teach uh, students of uh, my college as well. Later on, when I became a professional uh, at KC in, in KC College in Mumbai, so I'm always I've always been drawn to 
um, writing, journalism, and, and I think it stems from a curiosity about people. So if you look at, you know, why we so, sort of, you know, what is media really? It's stories about people, it's stories about culture, about things. And um, I think hard news is, is great and it keeps you informed. But how do you measure the, you know, a period in time? How do you know what was, you know, trending 10 years ago? What kind of music was playing or like what kind of foods were people eating? So I've always had um, that curiosity and love telling stories. And I think the, the journey into entrepreneurship was quite by accident. Um, but I think somewhere there is a deep sense of, I come from a business family. So I've oh. always seen my dad, uh, you know, grow his empire single-handedly. It's been very inspirational, traveled the world. In fact, I thought I'd grow up to be a businesswoman. Um, so it, it, it's in the genes. I don't want to sound you know, cliched, but I really think so. Like there's certain communities that we mentioned, you know, like the Marwaris, the Gujaratis, the Sindhis, they're very strong business communities because somehow they figure out how to make money from nothing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, So I, I, I think somewhere if you've grown up with dinner conversation revolving about, you know, shipments and customers and this and, and stresses, you're more, you're more um, acquainted with that world. You know, and it's very different, Vivek, when you're a professional, right? Because six o'clock you go home, you don't care if the building burns down. <laughs> Mera problem nahi hai. <laughs> right? And it's different when you run a business. It's your baby. It's a child. You have to keep your child uh, well fed, alive and growing. So right. it's it's two different things. So my uh, my co-founder, who's actually my sibling, you know, he thought of Surf Coffee we I've been involved since its inception. And then there was a point in time where we were growing significantly. And he said, okay, now, you know, I'd like you, <laughs> it'd be great if you could come on board uh, full time because it kind of, it required that time and energy. And I think it was an exciting point for me because we all need to learn how to reinvent ourselves. And I'm saying this, if anything, COVID is a very, um, I don't know, is a great example of this. Like if you were doing something and it's not working or something, you'll find a way to adapt, right? You you can't sit back and be like, I don't know how to do it. We're the apex predator. We're the race that has been to the moon. So you can do anything you put your mind to. Um, it's really about, you know, seeing what the void is in the market. So how do how do companies last? Right? Why do startups or small companies manage to last 10 years or break even? We broke even in three months. Wow. And I don't know, Vivek, if we were just lucky or like time acha chal tha. I don't know what, but we just, uh, we had like, I remember one of our very first paid clients was the MD of a huge bank. And I met him at a cafe. And our price plans, I think, started back then at 10,000 rupees for a year or something like that. And right. he just tore a check and he's like, you know, give it your best shot. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So I think it's just, you know, trust from from other people. It's, it's about being, um, I don't know, being confident, right? Believing in what you're doing. It's just, it's very hip to get into a startup these days, right? I see yeah, every yeah. second person <laughs> saying... I want to hustle, hashtag girl boss, hashtag Monday motivation. Yes, uh, it looks great on the outside, but you know the blood, the sweat, the tears that it takes to build a company. So I'm kind of glad I did make the shift when I did. You know, I think all industries like we're in, we don't do tech per se, but we're a hybrid, right? We use technology, we leverage technology, but still with a human matchmaker touch. And, and technology will never die. You know, yep. that's, sure. that's what, you know, and, and if you look at print media today, it's struggling. Everything's gone digital. So if you don't keep up with stuff, it's just, you lose out. Right, right, right. So there's Richa, uh, she says, business runs in the genes of your family. <laughs> so <laughs> she must be knowing you. And She's an old Naina, friend, yeah. <laughs> she says, Naina and Sunil ace it anyways. Right. So uh, it's interesting, actually, you know, I, I, I've i never thought about, even though I have Marwadi friends and all that, I've never thought that the dinner conversation part, I was never aware of it. I thought it's uh, the dads of those families are very strict. They come home and they are like, off. 
they have kids but it's not like that so that's good to know actually yeah right so i can see the kind of drive you have you have for your venture already you know so let me let me get a little bit deeper into it so tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey so far your your brother okay. pulled you in agreed that but how yeah. is it been so far so you know as all sort of um evolutionary journeys are you get plunged into something you get thrown into something that you don't know very well and then you learn on the job so i think that's that's purely what's happened not just for me but even for the company right so when i first came on board there were certain ways we were doing things and they weren't necessarily optimized there was little process because i think again surf coffee was a passion project that was happening on the side right no one gave it time and energy so for the first we were we were actually founded way back in 2008 and believe me um you know there was nothing vivek back then that had anything to do with matchmaking there were you know Absolutely. huge giant dot coms which were matrimonials and there was like one player in the market which fa- was founded in 96 but there was actually nothing happened there was no app there were no apps as well so we had to figure out what is the process what is our usp how are we going to stand out and how do you enforce that as an entrepreneur right so till till date it's been 10 years now we've had the same company policies we've had you know where we've chosen to sort of adapt and take feedback we've managed to do that but you have to be the kind of person that is receptive to Absolutely. all of this because the dynamics are constantly changing every 3 years the country changes you know governments yeah. change landscapes change consumer behavior changes so if you don't figure it out it just gets really hard to also know as an entrepreneur what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong so in fact from two, you know for about 2 years we were a free service we wanted to test the waters we reached out we sent out 100 emails a day to friends and family and we said listen we're trying to connect global indians because um i don't know if you read but my brother and i grew up outside of india so we've always been southeast asia babies we've had international co- colleagues and friends and cousins and we could really relate right it's easy to find a partner if you live in bombay or a delhi it's very hard to find a partner when you live in like london dubai singapore because somewhere you want someone who's culturally rooted as well Absolutely. so once we started getting success we said okay now how will people take surf coffee seriously we had to make it a paid engagement because that's that's just reality if you say i'm single and i'm interested and i want to get married then you have to put your money where your mouth is it's Absolutely. as simple as that i think yeah. so many of the other platforms don't have curation people complain about it they talked about how they got catfished and because there's yeah. absolutely no authenticity anyone yeah. can start anything right so yeah. with with time i think i learned the ropes on the job and uh, my sibling is my mentor in okay. many ways so neil's a yeah. uh, great you know we we clash when necessary because i'm very strong with you know people and relationships and I I don't mean to sound sexist but I think women are better matchmakers as Absolutely. well. I think I think they really have uh you know it's the emotional intelligence you need to do a job like this. It's very very forget you know demanding from a business standpoint. It's very demanding psychologically which people Absolutely. don't get. They think it's fun like every time I tell someone what of course it's fun. They'll be like oh wow you play Cupid and you know what a great job and i i want to say yeah but there's a hundred things behind the scenes that you're not witness to right so yeah, yeah. You're, you're dealing with emotions very raw emotions you're dealing with feelings and you won't believe it even in a covid um my team is providing up to 30 40% more support just on the phone you know even if they don't have to because we understand that yep. everyone's going through something it may bring out the best in you it may bring out the worst in you yep yep right? so um it's it's been great learnings and i think we continue the day you think you know it all you know you you don't <laughs> survive so it's it's uh, like i've learned so much about tech you know i'm i'm not very tech savvy i've not i don't know about you know python and coding and stuff like that but i've had to learn because you have to upgrade your skills you have to sort of you know know what's going on um simply so that you can offer the best to your clients you know and yeah. not compromise 
Absolutely. Yeah, so I can understand because self coffee and all these, uh, you are dealing, as you mentioned, raw emotions of people. It's very personal thing, right? For me, it's the most personal thing possible. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So that's a pretty, pretty touchy subject there. So let me, let me, uh, I wanted to ask this question later, but let me bring it on now itself. So, what drives Nana as an entrepreneur? Now I can call you entrepreneur because you are in the game for some time. It's not a passion project anymore. So what drives you as an entrepreneur? I think the, uh, if I were to put it plainly, I think the possibility that there is no definition to what you can do and how you can do it. The world is literally your oyster. If you, if you think of, I don't want to say things like commercial success and stuff like that, because we've already enjoyed that. Okay. So, you know, with time, Growth will happen. It's very natural. And I don't think money is a motivator for everyone. You know, it's important. It's critical for a business. But the power to sort of um, really make a change, you know, and not have any fences around you. You know, there is no glass ceiling. It's, it's, you can go as far as you can. Um, at at your pace, you can challenge yourself. You try new things, and Vivek, it's it's all as much as you know. I'm making them this sound very motivational. It's all very scary. You yep, know, you yep. wake up in the middle of the night, and you're like, "Am I doing the right thing? Is this is this what my life's purpose is? Am I wasting my time?" I said, "Four years are bad to nahi hoge." You know, when I could have <laughs> done something else. So all these, um, you know, like burning the midnight oil. It's really happened. And um, I just love what I do. So I've just been that kind of person where I don't get excited by, you know, brand names or number of organizations or how big it is or how small it is. It's just you have to believe in what you do from day one. Right. I became a writer because I wanted to tell stories. I moved to entrepreneurship because I felt like the world really needs this. Right. Not in some kind of, oh, we have such a noble profession you know, kind of, uh, you know, self-righteous tone. But I do feel we are changing people's lives. And the the testimony is the emails I get every day saying, I had such a great time with this person. I feel like things could really work out. Seeing people get married. Some of our clients, many of them have had children now. It's just one of those things that people really need help with. You could be really successful. You know, you could be... A hun- worth a hundred crores, but you come home to an empty house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a reality there that you know we're not addressing. So the traditional sort of Indian emphasis has been on make a lot of money or like become this first, and then you focus on everything else. What we don't realize is that relationships are integral to mental health. You may not want to get married, and that's absolutely fine. That's a personal stance. But if you're telling me we don't crave human connection. I mean, that person's just lying. It's all of us, right? So I think our work motivates us. I mean, motivates me to do better, to sort of, you know, I want to see every person who signs up on Surf Coffee get married. Like, that's always my goal. When someone comes on, I'm like, guys, we we want a wedding invitation from this individual. Please make it happen. So right. it's only when you aspire to do, you know, more, um, and you believe in it, and you show it, you have to be committed to what you're sort of putting out there, right? I don't think entrepreneurship uh, is for someone who doesn't have like basic discipline. You could be a genius. You could be a genius, but like, why do we see, you know, young rising CEOs get kicked off the board? Why do we see companies shutting down that have been funded? You know, their series A has been massive and there's a lot of, you know, there's a story on your story and then Pan Salbad, you don't know what happens, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's very important to also put your ear to the ground and be aware and, and sort of just do your best. You know, I think I, I think one of my college teachers told me, if you're really good at what you do, the money comes. Right, you know, you right. focus on being really good at what you're doing. Right, right, right. Yeah, I remember I remember I had Vinay single of Vitti feed here. So he was saying that Vivek, if I was doing it for money, I would have left it and ran away you know there were yeah. times when there was no money but it's the passion of you know doing something uh, for the community yeah. i think so. 
All right, that's fantastic to hear. Actually, I'm I'm so glad that I uh, I invited and you accepted this. All right. So for people no. who don't know what is surf coffee, how would you explain that? What is surf? Coffee? Sure, sure. So, um, in a nutshell, we're a bespoke matchmaking service for Indians all around the world, and what we try to do is we're in a sweet spot between two extremes right so one extreme is the very traditional style where your mom dad sister grandmother neighbor everyone gets involved to be like let's get vivek married you know and i need his birth birth chart so i can you know compare it with every other girl in the neighborhood then you have the other extreme which are the apps right so they're purely tech driven there's an algorithm um that's helping you sort of showing up results and you're swiping left or right and kind of taking it from there now right. what we realized is that there was a deep void for a service that's mindful that's encouraging meaningful relationships and for people who are in that space so you don't have to be a certain age or from a certain community or in a certain location to realize that you want love in your life long term right and so right. the average um you know surf coffee person whoever is on the service tends to be yes academically well educated driven and you know professionally excelling at whatever whatever they've chosen to do but what actually interests us in is who they who they really are who are they beyond the salaries and the degrees and the stuff that's on paper right because that's the stuff that's been pitched to everybody so you, right. you can't be commodified right and again i'm going to take a little bit of a of a gender detour here but i think that's especially true for women and it's terrible like if you're not fair and lovely you suck you know ladka nahi milega you will be single all your life or you should you know be an mbbs and have a you know work your ass off basically and then come back and get married because it's the right thing to do no actually you should marry someone you're in love with that's what we believe so surf coffee is a very curated approach to finding love with matchmakers who will hand pick your next match so either we get it really really right or we get it wrong mostly we do get it right i think you don't survive if you keep getting it wrong um and i think people really appreciate it because love is a complex domain yeah it's not analytical i'm not i'm not sure you know if i go to a gym and i take up a fitness membership it's a very straightforward service right yeah yep. you know what you're getting into you know what you purchased and you know how you'll engage you know in that relationship or if i buy a product but something like this is very very delicate and it it could really go any any way so one of the reasons i think people come to a service like surf coffee actually quite a few of them is that there's a curated consensus of people they're all thinking like you they all want to be with somebody and if things go well sure you you can date for 6 weeks you can date for 6 months you can get married after 6 years it's open ended the second thing is there's no interference from any third party no brother sister ma you know neighbor <laughs> third random uncle who lives sharma ji on the second floor he doesn't need to know what's happening in your personal life Right? right so it's i think surf coffee is for somebody who has an independent bent of mind they've chosen their career they know what they're doing they know what kind of people they like and they really go for it so we are responsible till the first date you know we facilitate that two people either show up at a cafe for a cup of coffee or a you know maybe a drink depending on what day and time of the week it is or if you're in two different cities you do a virtual introduction so we would set up the zoom call or whatever medium if we're using facetime and you have to show up there is skin in the game right mm. you can't say then i'm actually really interested but i won't come on camera because then that doesn't seem like it doesn't seem congruent with your intentions your actions are are different right and Absolutely. i think people enjoy the process because it's it's open ended you could really really get along with this person and in 3 years you could be married or in 3 months you could be engaged but it's beautiful to enjoy the process right which we felt that people had stopped doing because of yep. the various pressures right even with apps there is dating fatigue vivek 
you keep swiping there are sort of you know now social disorders that are cropping up because yep. of our relationship with so- social media and apps so one of the things that a psychologist was sort of um highlighting which i watched on a ted talk is um you know cognitive overload is that when you 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 know it's a singles bar in your pocket 24/7 so you can keep swiping you can keep meeting people all your life without actually having to commit and it's it's crazy there is no end yeah, you know yeah. so i i really think we found um the right kind of you know person who there is an entire demographic of people who really need our service and they reach out and we try to help them and what's amazing is that there's a feedback process as well so right. today if you went on a date with say an aditi and you know you had a great time the next day you would actually have a couple of questions in your inbox asking you you know what did you like about her what you didn't and the million dollar question do you want to see her again you know because that's another thing right. ghosting right. is real people you know go on a date for 3 hours and then the the guy or the, the woman will say oh we should catch up next week let's do this and then you never hear from them again and then you get traumatized then you get upset then you get depressed you'll watch binge watch a net, netflix show and then you'll get back on the <laughs> that's you know, true that's true uh, on the medium so what what you need is is honesty in in a very gentle way you know where it's self everyone's an adult you respect other people's choices and um it's it's amazing how fast how much faster you progress in your personal life because there is this level of transparency i'm not saying anything is full proof nothing yep, yep. in life is full proof but i feel the propensity to lie or pretend to be something you're not is much less because you're investing in this so you know if you're saying something that's untrue or inauthentic how much will you pull it off yeah yeah you know everything has a shelf life and i i love that everyone's very forthcoming and and open and i think here to do what they think they are to do and and that that for me is good enough <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i understand because i have been following your instagram page and all that the kind of stories you have there that is yeah. a proof that it's a, it's a good concept we all need it because i have a lot of subordinates or a lot of colleagues who are on i don't want to take names of that which are <laughs> yeah. quite, various swiping. mediums <laughs> yeah yeah so swiping left and right and finally they are all kind of all the time in a very weird state of mind you know it has a weird kind of uh, effect on them anyway yeah. so my next question you already touched upon it but i want to know that why did uh, you know why did uh, your brother thought about this and what was the drive real reason behind it to start something like yeah. this it's not an easy journey sure. so what was that sorry i can hear you okay can you hear me fine yeah i can hear I you i think it just yeah okay great so um i i had like you said touched upon this earlier yeah um it's you know it was literally personal need right so mm-hmm. we were you know outside of the country um in fact this is this is a true story so i think my brother was in his uh, you know like mid 20s when my mom was just like you know you seem very settled in your career and things are going really well so now it's time you know i'm looking forward to my ghar ki bahu and he's just like okay where did that come from and then he's and and see again i think like age is just a number right it's really yep. about where you where you are in life you could feel very settled at 30 you could feel very unsettled even at 40 so these are all things that you know don't matter but he was actually in a position to you know actually settle down so um you know he said uh, okay i i'm i'm happy to sort of take the plunge but you know how do i find somebody and my mother's like wait i'll pass on a bio data and and you can take it from there and he's like but why she's not applying for a job you know this is i i want to like speak to someone or meet them and sort of take that decision so um you know like i said there was literally nothing out there that made you feel comfortable to to do this or to date someone uh, and vivek honestly the dating culture in india is kind of non existent right yeah, yeah. like you you hear about those love stories 
in the 70s and 80s where two people ran away together and all this you know dead re- devilry that you hear from your friends parents and stuff but you're not encouraged to date you're not encouraged to explore you don't get you don't get the freedom to actually even explore things like if you met somebody two three times you have family members you know stepping and saying bus 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 ho gaya abhi shaadi karo you know and you're like wow like i had to give six interviews for a job but this happened in three meetings like you know talk about pressure so it was literally that and not just giving opportunities to indians in india but i think overseas it's it's really difficult you you want to you know if you wanted to marry someone non indian you would have done it already but i think when you grow up outside away from india you are rooted like we all speak our mother tongue right we all follow basic festivals like diwali you know no one comes to your house and wonders i mean yeah people wonder okay, what is this samosa it just looks bizarre it tastes bizarre why is there incense you know these are like our cultural nuances that you know yeah. we we see and you want to be with someone who who thinks on similar lines or, or who you because when you marry somebody it's like your your life takes that direction you you build your lineage right you actually have yeah, children yeah. with this person so if that's a preference then you should be given a platform that allows you to express that preference so if i'm in some tiny little you know town in the us how do i meet these people right? right or in the uk or like we've we've had clients from really you know we've had clients from rome from the hague in the netherlands which is like the diplomatic capital right so not the party amsterdam but most people don't even know the hague exists um we are working with people from poland we got someone from nairobi married um these are all really dynamic amazing people you yeah. know who were just needed access needed guidance and i think you come to a surf coffee and vivek this is also another reason why we we started this is because you know tech is not enough algorithms cannot impersonate human reasoning Absolutely. i know ai and stuff is doing great but and i'd love to have that conversation in 10 years but i don't think we're there yet you know how do you when i'm on an app and i put my age range as 30 to 35 i'm you know thrown people are thrown at me and i swipe and i figure it out on a surf coffee you could say i'm looking for someone between 30 to 35 the matchmaker will look for a match for you and say you know what i found this amazing person who would be a fantastic match for you but they're 36 but you know what why don't you give it a shot mm-hmm. if you like them i i really you know you can thank me later if you don't like them i'm happy to take your criticism so mm-hmm. where does that you know intuition it's 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 actually it's part, it's partly scientific but so much of perspective is intuition based right it comes from experience yeah. of sort of doing this for a long time and people you will not believe i've actually fought with my clients and been like you have to go on this date because <laughs> i really believe in this and they're like okay i'll just go so that you get off my back you know like right, right. so like there's a couple that's you know living in together in in bombay in bandra and they got together because i literally had to you know facilitate this um because everyone has preferences right they'll be like i'm not okay with this i'm not okay with that and it comes from conditioning it comes from your thought process it comes from what you see around you you know it's kind of stereotyping and yeah, we're trying yeah. to break the stereotype right, right so you know not not everyone you know um is right you know including us with some of we find a middle ground and so people go on that date and they're like you know you you were really spot on with that recommendation and in right. the last 5 years vivek we've been getting it right a lot faster so a lot right. of people have ended up um you know marrying the first second third person they've met on surf coffee which is honestly not the norm but um i mean i'm proud to say that it is reflective of effort it's not right. a fluke you yeah. know that we we get we we're really figuring out what it takes um without slotting people without stereotyping them without making them feel like you know that they're, they're compromising on something he embrace individuality if you want to meet someone beautiful that's fine say it 
have the balls to say it ki that's what i want right but this whole right. like pretense that people have no no i'm very open minded <laughs> and they're not <laughs> this doesn't get anyone anywhere right 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 so yeah that's what you know it's interesting that you said flu- the word fluke i don't think this is one area where fluke will never work <laughs> yeah, fluke really has, really like All you right. have so, to give everything thought right yeah. it's just yeah, yeah. Uh, simple as that so my next question is you said it's a bespoke offline dating service so how does it all work if i want to understand right. the process sure sure so we're a hybrid of sort of you know using tech to a um, you know we have a website surfcoffee.com so it's okay. universally accessible anywhere in the world someone could log on right from mexico to australia people yeah. apply on the website Okay. So this is basically a 15 20 minute application. It's pretty quick because we touch upon different sections um you know about your life. For example, right. basic details like who are you? Where do you live? Um you know, academics, what was your last degree? What do you do for a living? And a couple of like personal uh sort of habit questions like drinking, smoking, is someone um does someone have marital history? Mm-hmm. You know, these are important things to know what yeah, do they yeah. do outside of work and even coming down to um you know your partner preferences so basic like if i'm if i'm 33 i want to meet someone between 34 to 37 that's my preferred age range where do i want to meet these people so uh, we're very privileged vivek to work with literally global indians in every sense of the word right um right. so they're jet setting i have clients who maybe are in 30 cities in a year and i'm not wow. even kidding like they're on a plane every two weeks i mean not now because <laughs> because of what we're going through but right. it's great right so they tell me look i can meet someone in like dubai or london or like tel aviv or delhi and i'm like okay so it's a lot <laughs> more to sort of plan right but we get a sense right. of their flexibility you know so yeah. when you determine eligibility you could be amazing but what is it that you're open to is very very important right uh, mm-hmm. because yeah. if someone and i'll be very real with this if someone says i'm from bangalore and i'm looking for someone in core mangala between 57 to 59 uh from 29 to 31 who's vegetarian on tuesdays <laughs> <laughs> i'm just going to say we're not the right service that's like a needle in a haystack right? right a little flexibility is good in fact the more open minded you are you never know you might just find someone your your dream partner you know three lanes away it could happen we've right. seen it happen so right. it's really about uh, knowing getting a glimpse of this individual after that they move to an interview stage okay so this is where the deep dive into their life happens right from where did you grow up to you know what's what's going on to uh what's happening in your life do you love your job do you hate it are you planning to relocate what are you looking for in a partner right to like you know hey do you see yourself having kids and you'd be surprised how people have really strong thoughts on a bunch of these things yep, right yep. i'm meeting people in their early 30s who are just like no the planet is screwed i don't want to add to the population i want to travel with my partner and live happily ever yep. after it's fine right. it's a stance right. but it's really good to know where what someone even like relationship history if someone's married before a kind of we need to know a little bit about it so that we're not we're not you know breaking patterns in the wrong way right they may have had experiences and this is where empathy is critical you know so people have been through a lot you kind of want to make this process easier for them um and it's it's like vivek it's like being a therapist yeah. you're know, around you know um you're like oprah or ellen <laughs> <laughs> people are telling you all about their lives um yeah. and we really appreciate that so after that the matchmakers get together right then the interaction with the applicant is over they put their heads together and they determine eligibility on all those factors right so um who you are what you're looking for there are two elements to it is vivek a great guy the second element is can he go on fantastic dates in the regions right. and sort of with the preferences that he's asked for because right. it's seldom you know the reality that someone's not great they're all wonderful people yeah. but yeah. if i'm working with someone who's 55 
I have to be realistic. And even if I choose to work with them, I have to acquaint them with what the possibilities are. And someone who say like 28 would have naturally a lot more options. Right, right? right. So we do that due diligence in advance. That right. professionalism, that that ethical stance is very important because um, a lot of, and I hate to say this, Vivek, so many people come to us saying, I had a really bad experience on this platform. This happened to me. They just took my money and bounced. And I think that's, again, because no one's giving thought to what this individual wants. And A, is it, can we deliver? It's as simple as that, right? right. Even when two clients are meeting in any industry, don't you, don't you gauge feasibility? If I'm an architect and someone says, can you build this for me? I'd be like, yeah, man, it's, it's out of bounds. I don't think it's my cup of tea. But you need to have that, um, that integrity to say so. And I think yeah. that's what people appreciate. So we do that due diligence. We get back to the client and we tell them, hey, we love you. Come on board. Or we say, look, you're a great person, but this is not going to work out at this given point. Right? So yeah. there is, um, that's, that's where we choose membership is by application. And very few services sort of endorse that. Once we they do come on board, we start setting them up on dates, and you know the rest is history. It's it's you, you're meeting new people, you're figuring it out, and hopefully getting married and not contacting me again, saying that's great, Nana, thanks. I don't need you anymore. I've met somebody, and so it happens a lot. Like we just yeah. you know set up a couple of dates even before COVID and, and during it. So they're all video calls. We moved everything to a virtual platform. And uh, a few of these people have really hit it off. You know, they're like, I'll reach out to you if I need you again. I, and that's, that's, those are my dream <laughs> words to hear. That's music to my ears. <laughs> bye bye, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Fantastic. Actually, I, I, uh, listening to you, I'm feeling that this is, this is the kind of service which is much needed in the current world. Because yeah. I have heard stories, so weird stories about people getting catfished and cheated on matrimonial. Yeah. People yeah. go there and treat it like a Tinder or something like that. So it's, it's a very weird yeah. world out there. So it's a much, yeah. much that's a, it's like a uh, divine thing you guys are doing, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think everything is a risk, right? Like, I'll be honest, like, we all have friends who've dated someone for five years and then gotten divorced. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I think when you go in with something and there's a little bit of like the one thing that I think really differentiates Surf Coffee from the rest is that I think my team really cares about these people on a personal level. They're really it may sound silly, but we know so much about them. We know what their likes and dislikes are, what their patterns are, what is something that they do, what is a tendency, what is right. not. And I'm telling you, some people's parents also don't know them that well. Right, it's just right. yeah, because no one no one analyzes your dates, right? right? right, right. No one, when I'm getting feedback, if you went on that date, I'm going to use the Aditi example because that's the one I use. I, not only do I know what Vivek thought, I also know what she thought about you, right, right? right? So I think sometimes we all do KRAs in the corporate world. We try to get better at what we do. Who gives you feedback about your personal life or about you know what you're doing on dates? Nobody does. Like your parents are like, Mera beta to, you know, Mira hai or something. And then your friends will be like, you know, if if uh, if you tell them, if you narrate your dating experiences, they'll be like, oh, you deserve better. I mean, they're trying to be encouraging, right? Your friends will always boost your always. morale. But you actually don't know how the other person thought. Absolutely. So somewhere it's, you, you have to be vulnerable. If you're not vulnerable, it's very difficult to find love, whether you're on an app or you're on a service like ours. You have to be true to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's those are true words. You have to be true to yourself. And you you have to be really vulnerable if you have to find love. Simple as that. So yeah. uh, you already spoke about it a little bit. So if I have to ask, uh, what are some of the USP of Surf Coffee? I know that you have a fantastic team who cares about these folks, both parties. So what are some of the USPs which you are proud of to mention about. Sure, this. sure. I, I think some of uh, the, the top things that come to my mind is that your, the curation, right. you know, there's, there's a deep amount of curation that's not just done um, with information, but also with human interaction. Someone's investing 
45 minutes to maybe one and a half hours in getting to know you and, you know, doing their homework to make sure if they can help you or not. Nobody right. does that, Vivek. I'm pretty sure. And unless, you know, you hired, um, you know, kind of specialist. And, and again, it's not accessible to everyone, right? Yeah. One of the things we've made Surf Coffee a paid membership, but I think it's not prohibitive. Like we have people as young as 20, 25. They're working. They're probably in their first, second, third job at best. They can very well afford Surf Coffee. Yeah. And yeah right to you know somebody if somebody wants to waste time that deters them you will not swipe your card if you're just surfing the internet at midnight and doing you know time pass right yeah. so i think doing away with um there is a deep sense of curation there's no algorithm i'm very proud of the fact that we're anti-algorithmic um also you know no swipe culture right. so the the kind of we take the user interface away from you if you think right. about it, you can't do anything on Surf Coffee. You made your profile, you went for the interview, and that's it. You can't control. It's literally a blind date. We don't share surnames. Right. We don't share photos. But we do share the basics, right? Um, and I think the caliber of people as a result of this curation becomes a massive USP that you're meeting great people. These are fantastic people. I mean, I'm humbled, Vivek, when my clients are on a Forbes 30 under 30 list and they wow. choose something like this. Yeah, because you kind of, it's, it's this, there's, I think, discretion and privacy is a huge part of it. Right. right. So let's be honest. Let's say I don't work for Surf Coffee and I'm looking for my partner. Do I want to be on a masspace.com? Absolutely not. I'd rather die single. I'm saying this <laughs> openly. Because it's it's just not something that's that's me. I feel like a commodity. It's way too public. We all have a professional reputation. You're working with people from you know different parts of the world. So to give you a real example, if I'm working with someone who's 35, works with one you know a very well known law firm in India. She's a partner there. She's risen up the ranks. Worked really hard from associate to partner. You know went to Columbia Law School. Does she want to be on an app? highly unlikely yeah yeah right I, so I, privacy I, privacy is i would think one of the biggest usps a lot of we we work with a lot of yes upcoming executives right to c level ex, you know c level executives because there's trust and and that you know they get nervous about this rightfully so because who wants to be googled by a stranger right it's a Absolutely. very unappealing sort of feeling right yeah. and i yeah. think um, the fact that we're also global, we're accessible, wherever in the world you are, we can set you up. And I think right. that's not an easy feat. Like we, we've serviced clients from Brazil to like, like I said, much smaller cities, bigger cities. Um, and it's been, you know, it's been wonderful to be able to help. In fact, I think they need it the most. You yeah. know, it's, it's ironic that Surf Coffee is so popular in a country like India where we're a billion plus brown people, yeah. you know, everyone is Indian. <laughs> it's not like it's a, it's, it's troublesome finding Indians. Um, um, but I don't know this, this doesn't it, it herald the fact that everyone's changed. People have changed. I've, we've seen, I really feel the average Indian has evolved tremendously. We're all aspirational a lot more. Now you want yep, to yep. sort of, live your best life and i don't just mean by materialistic or you know in financial ways or professional ways or like being goal oriented but just being mindful of your time of your choices and if you think about it we've really come a long way so when surf coffee started off people wouldn't want to go to the website they're like i don't want to key in information about myself i don't feel safe today we're in a time where you order toilet paper on amazon if you look at consumer culture and trusting the internet to not just do, um, you know, deeper things for you, but also very simple things. You now, you know, I'm probably one of those old souls who don't have UPI and Google Pay and all these <laughs> things because I'm just like, no, yeah, I'm one of those. I'm like, any FT details, please. <laughs> I'm still in that time. Um, but that's that's my point is that if you you need something, you also, Indians have learned, Vivek, to go to specialists or experts to help them. So health coaches, business coaches are doing so well in India, right? 
um, life coaches. This concept, yeah. did you hear about it 10 years ago? It didn't exist. You didn't know what a life coach was. The only kind yeah. of coach you had was like in school who made you run around the field, right? So I really appreciate that you know that you're going to someone who knows a little bit more about this, who's experienced, you're in good hands, and you you just have to surrender. It's like going to Vipassana. You just surrender. You're like, you know what to do. You t- and, and those clients really find their partners um, you know, much faster because you've kind of let go of all your inhibitions. Trust, right. trust in any business is critical. Yep, yep. It's actually your life. You have to have a little bit amount of trust there to things to work out. Without trust, nothing happens. Absolutely. So that's, Absolutely. That's, that's, that's fantastic. I think, I hope a lot of single people watch this. <laughs> you know, because, because I feel, you know, I got married long time ago. Like long, long time ago. <laughs> Damn, Damn, I was going to pitch serve coffee to you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So what, I'm, what I want to know now is, let's let's talk about some numbers so i've i've visited your website 10 20 times this week there are a lot of big numbers over there happy clients marriages so if you remember any numbers on your fingertips i would be glad to so glad to hear I, that. I, sure i i think we don't really um so we look at we look at a couple of basic things right one is um we don't really count marriage as a success rate and i'll tell you why yeah. because there are, if I'm catering to three generations of Indians, someone right. from 25 to 58, marriage is maybe not the end goal for a lot of them. I, I have like, for example, a couple in their 40s in Bombay who live together. They're not married, but is that a surf coffee success? Absolutely. So what I'm really interested in is do first dates become second dates? That kind of shows me that we're getting it right much right. faster. So that that's at about 68%, which I think is pretty decent. So I I basically want someone to go on a date and come away with their mind blown. Right. And in terms of new clients, we take on anywhere between 800 to 1000 new people in a year. So that's, you know, over a period of time. And a lot of I would say at least 40% of people also choose to come back. So you may have used Surf Coffee for six months. Um, you may not have found your partner, but you come back because, and I asked them why I, it's like, because you guys get it, you know, you guys get what I'm looking for. I've met great people. And so Vivek, even success as an outcome is, is very subjective, right? Like you went on, let's say four or five dates. You liked all these girls. Now it all depends also on how they reciprocate. Yeah. Yeah. If the other person says no, we communicate that, right? But it means that somewhere you were attracted to this person. They were wonderful. You spent like two hours in a restaurant and didn't even know how time passed. So we try to sort of uh, have a boutique organic approach because this this is also a very high risk kind of line of work, right? We Again, there are no guarantees. You have to have your guard up. You want to make sure you're working with really good people because you're protective of your clients. And we we love that the fact that we know everyone by face and name, you know, they're not like ID number 500 <laughs> and something. No, we actually know them. We've met them. We've spoken to them and know a great deal about them. So I think on, on that front, in fact, we're very hopeful also about this year. I know COVID happened and, you know, a couple of months were sort of affected. But after that, um, you know, I think, this is an, and I think we will talk about this later as well. But I think the way we live, the way we work, and the way we date will have to change. So, you know, it's it's a it's part of the game. Right. I know. I, I, I suddenly I got a thought that maybe COVID will make people realize that they need a good partner in life. Because <laughs> most of, most of it them has. Are <laughs> it it has. I don't know if you've been reading the news. Dating apps have crashed apparently. I, I heard, oh my God. I heard I, today I, that I, their I, servers I, are down <laughs> because they can't take the um, no. But on a on an honest front, I think um, this this pandemic, right? It's given everyone time and space to really think, you think about think. their lives. Yeah, reflect. Uh, what have you sort of been doing that you know has worked for you, hasn't worked for you, and are you putting off something that you know for a long time, like? I know we have our parents who keep saying, Are shadi karo, shadi karo. but you know, 
sometimes you know that you want to find a partner you just don't bring yourself to do it and right. if anything this this situation has compelled everyone to slow down so yeah. you could be a high flying banker who was making millions till 4 months ago abhi kuch nahi ho raha right i mean i i tell me if you disagree vivek because i think this virus has been a real leveler yeah, yeah, yeah you could be you know um in your own bubble or you know think that you know you you were doing great things and changing the world and actually you realize that the fr- fragility of life then nothing yep. matters more than your health so exactly. that that sort of cycle of thought has definitely i can see it in my clients they've become a lot more you know introspective they've become a lot more empathetic not not to others also but even to themselves you know sometimes yep. we're so hard on ourselves yeah, so yeah. we did see a surge we saw at least a 20% surge and this is a crazy demographic but we saw a lot of guys sign up on surf coffee usually mm. we have a higher female uh, you know the gender ratio is skewed towards women um quite naturally which i think yeah. is another great thing it shows that they actually consider services like this to be much safer they're more comfortable with it they're more forthcoming and this yeah. time we had a lot of men like in the i would say 28 to 38 kind of demographic that just came on board because i think it just hits you that yeah. <laughs> what am i doing <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's been good yeah so a lo- lot of uh, the kind of conversation i have been having with my lot of my colleagues and friends have also changed during this covid mm. early it was all let's go do this do that but now it's yeah like, yeah hey, yeah it's what's going it's like everyone's become wiser <laughs> <laughs> right so the, my my next question is a little bit about your competition because i did a little bit of research on the space offline dating and all that there are a lot of players but i didn't find anything exciting like sir so mm-hmm. to be honest okay mm-hmm. i'm not saying this because you are on the show i'm just honestly yeah. saying that i did a search the kind of model and things like that that different so how do you manage to carve a niche for surf coffee you know you already right. spoke a lot about it but still when it comes to competition they might be offering something else you might be coming up with a new thing so how did you carve a niche for yourself sure um that's a that's a great question because i think like you're absolutely right i don't think there's a lot of players that do what we do we yeah. are unique uh in many ways what i think has happened uh, which has been good is that you know with the eruption of services right or you call them apps or you call them the matrimonials whatever the market share has increased which is right. always helpful that you know um i'll be honest till there was no dating apps right um people would not do anything online again i'm saying i'm using this example because once you you subject yourself to a dating app you actually see value the value addition that a bespoke service brings so like i tried this mere liye nahi hua kuch and therefore maybe i need i need a professional to kind of step in so i actually don't see them as a threat i think they really help grow awareness i think india has not had a dating culture i feel like people do feel repressed i don't feel that many indians sitting at home have expressed themselves freely you know i feel yeah. like if you can use a service that helps you sort of be the person you are meet new people you know if you go to if you if you're in europe and you go to a bar and you start talking to someone no one's going to turn around and say oh my brother's standing right there but that will happen to you in india yeah, right yeah. so Quite everything possible. in india is very cliqueish everyone has a circle everyone has a group of friends you can imagine someone relocating cities has a really hard time to break through like you literally have to make friends at the gym or like your office because yeah. people don't open up they're just like who is this person and i feel like you know with with the rise of different avenues like i believe um there are services that do a lot of events yeah again i think what they bring to the table is allow you to you know communicate to sort of network right and i mean you're the second person i'm speaking to live today there's like a hundred of these networking entrepreneurship groups there's like there's so much you can do yeah. right now yeah, but i yeah. think in in my opinion the best the best kind of marketing tool has been word of mouth Absolutely. it really has you know the minute someone gets married or they're dating they go and tell five friends it's like you just you just don't even question you're just like this really works 
you know yeah. and then, and at the same time i've met people in such bizarre ways i've met them at a party then they signed up on surf coffee and they got married to someone um on linkedin you know <laughs> lots of people write to me yeah they send me a private message and they're like you know again a very high profile professional who says do you know can you help me because i think i need something like this so i think we've been using um certain tools to our advantage i'll be honest i'm not a again you know i'm not on instagram all the time and you know haven't focused i believe digital marketing is the new thing that everyone has to do but i think we found our space you know right. and and yeah. like you said i mean at the beginning of this you you read out a number of publications we've been featured in and stuff like that all of that has been organic we've right. never paid for any of it um which is a lot of what you talk about as well right is that you're the thrifty marketer <laughs> who want to sort of um you know cuz i i feel like if you know you i'd rather invest in the technology in the team in human resources instead of having a massive you know marketing budget so i mean this may sound controversial but one of the dating apps that launched in india and they went all out every billboard was yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah i know that one. right uh, and they got a indian american actor to be you know to be as an investor on board um when a report came out in the ken earlier this year i was surprised to read that only 30% of users are female despite you know such strong pro women uh marketing That's great true. advertising yeah like great copy like i would you know i would actually chuckle to myself if i was sitting in my car and this is really relevant i think it really yeah. resonated so i think what they're doing is great you know even if you're asking a certain gender to make the first move it's great because that that just not existed in india you know you're always told to wait for the man to call you wait for the guy to drop you he should take the tab and i want to be like yeah it's 2020 you go dutch you know that's how it is yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. i th- i think we stand out we're a small fish in a big pond but um i think we people know what we do and i think they are also self aware of whether this is something they want to do or not want to do right like lots of people love looking at profiles and micromanaging on their own and filtering right. and more power to them i think you know you do what what works for you right yeah 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 so i i think i love the uh, word word of mouth right you have happy customers they bring customers to you so you don't have to worry about yeah. that i'm pretty sure, sure. It's, a, it's a good journey ahead so uh, my next question will be about your future plans so how what are the future plans of surf coffee um to grow bigger and better okay. i would say so to grow definitely better i think we have a great team um you know to make the right hires uh you know sort of be everywhere like i again the world is our oyster because it literally is we're working with people in canada to the us to like india to i mean we have a uh, i have a colleague in dubai uh, my co-founder is in london so in many ways we're kind of you know spanned across the world and and to really sort of see the outcome of all this hard work right because right, it's right. it's literally been that um to really sort of look at you know what can we do better in fact just as we you know because we're speaking we're launching a new website so we've completely changed um the front end it should be out literally in less than 2 days we've really worked on the tech and you know just trying to give everything give everyone a better experience right of engagement yeah. Yeah. um i think it really is all of that vivek i think you'll agree with me when it's you know brands make uh, people make brands it's not Absolutely. the other way around you will only come to a service when you know you feel like this person i i you know they're passionate about what they're doing um so really sort of widening that funnel raising brand awareness and we've been very lucky to sort of have all of it happen but you know maybe look at different things that you know with what we can do like we get a lot of interest to partner up with certain brands and alliances and uh we've not been focusing on that as much because i think we we're working at <laughs> doing what we do you know it's yeah. very hectic since lockdown my team has set up 600 dates you can't imagine how overworked they probably are they're working on saturday like late nights or friday night my team is like working as we are speaking um you know they'll take that one day off and then the next day 
you know on a monday morning the number of emails like come flooding into our inbox <laughs> is yeah and and so many people have questions right all of yeah, that yeah. answering queries so there's so many elements to a, to a business so maybe yeah. we want to focus on working with you know certain like minded partners if it makes sense right because i think we're also very self aware of our brand identity right um and and we're very protective about data so definitely you know looking at things that can leverage and make you know things things work for both parties not instead of oh you know this is i want my clients to have a great time honestly and we're also looking at really in, you know interesting things like people want always keep encouraging us to add new verticals maybe you know get a mental health specialist on board that's something we're thinking about because yeah. some people would like that they feel like yep. you know i'm i'm happy to pay for that bit can you sort of help me again can you curate that for me yeah so i'm just like right. yeah so you know we have our own circle of sort of trusted people like if someone asks me i always say go to this person they'll they're really great you know they'll help you out but maybe looking at sort of those aspects of growing the brand right uh, would would be i think great goals to have and work towards <laughs> whenever we get time <laughs> <laughs> you are you are too modest about saying that we are lucky we are lucky but i i can imagine the amount of work which would have gone yeah. behind you it's it's really crazy so yeah. my this question i have i have i have been asking everybody uh, you already mentioned a little bit about it how has this pandemic impacted self coffee um so in terms of business it's i think initially it was a little difficult to adapt um not because so i i did mention this we've always been covid prepared so if two people are not in the same city it is always a virtual interact interaction so we don't wait for someone to fly to bangalore or fly to singapore we just say hey have a have a skype chat the skype was big back in the day so we do skype videos we do like uh, a whatsapp call and stuff like that so that that hasn't been a problem in terms of the team adapting i i think initially there was a bit of resistance from people you know they were just like are but i want to meet this individual in person right, right. and i think uh, the grass is always greener on the other side when you could meet people you were like hey i want to talk on the phone and then now that you're being asked to talk on the phone you're just like i want to meet people because you simply yeah. can't um but i think over 90% of our members have made the transition and it's been great they found people that they like they're actually engaging um so it's been actually in hindsight it's been interesting we've adapted we you know put out our policies and um i think now we we we're, we're in the groove you know literally so even june was a very active month for us a lot of people came on board a lot of people went on dates um and it's it's lovely right because you're actually vivek you could spend 20 hours a week on netflix or you could talk to someone new yeah yeah it's like what's what's your priority you know in life you ask yourself like what am i doing with my time so the pandemic has reinforced a couple of brand philosophies for us ki bhai everybody needs somebody in their lives we all need love if not even from a partner from your families from people that you adore um and what am i going to do about it so i think we've had a very positive i mean we're choosing to launch a new website even in this time because i see the digital engagement is there people are frequenting the website we're getting a string of questions we get at least 10 20 queries every day from different people hey oh i am i'm a single parent i'm 39 is this service for me so i think interest is there the buzz is there um we're really trying to help people on that front right so you you mentioned 3 months to 600 dates that's not a that's, joke that's that's just insane that's how much we would we set up a maybe like 800 dates a year generally <laughs> so it's like, oh, yeah, you can yeah. imagine because everyone's uh, the one thing i will say vivek people have become mindful about how they spend their time so there's an excellent there was a beautiful article i read in the new york times that says the corona virus has actually made dating more mindful earlier you would go out every night meet different people and but you know now if you're talking to someone and she doesn't hold your attention for 30 minutes you will not talk to them again yep yep so <laughs> right so uh, 
one question from audience actually you have already been okay. spoke, speaking about it he is adamant about asking this question he is asking what is the secret behind self coffee i i i would say the people and the people See? make um make great brands make great companies make great entrepreneurial journeys i think right. it's all that and that shows um again we're very thankful about it that we've made it this far and i i hope uh, you know i always joke around with my clients i'm like maybe your children will be using our service also <laughs> that will be nice that will be nice that will be a good story actually yeah right. yeah so i I've, i've taken enough time of yours and so let me leave you with one last question it is a philosophical question right you're already an entrepreneur so if somebody is starting off his or her journey you know what will be the one advice you will give or especially from a female entrepreneur person mm. right um i so maybe i'll sort of mix you know two points sure. in in this sure. so one is um like I, we get asked this a lot people reach out to us as well like someone recently actually reached out to me and said oh i'm planning to build this platform that connects x kind of people together what is your advice so it was a certain community based thing so i think the first thing is figure out if what you're offering is relevant and different right because mm-hmm. honestly if it's not vivek then you're just doing what 200 other people are doing you're not adding value right? right so if you want you want to build um you know a company that sells x product that's fine but like what are you doing differently are you sustainable are you you know helping empower certain artisans are you you know what, what is it that you're offering and even even as a service right because other than that and i mean i wouldn't say this but i've seen a lot of apps and companies try to like rip off what we've done and yeah. safe to say they haven't even survived until date but it's just so it's so sad to see that that there's no originality yeah so yeah. please be original in whatever you do do not just you know oh something a concept's really working in the us so i should just take the same thing and like no like every every region is different every market is different figure that out and the second thing i would say is that you know really really people just persevere you know because it's not it's not easy it's it's definitely is a lot of challenges um and i'll say this on a very candid note you may meet 10 people who are really really nice to you and speak to you very well and then you will meet five people who are absolutely unkind and terrible to talk to so right. you have to not get thrown off there are people who tell you that they don't believe in in your concept that you're wasting your time i've heard all of this you know 10 years ago why why are you leaving a lucrative career to work for a startup you know what is the guarantee there is no guarantee but you have to take risk and you have to persevere you have to see your dream through then if you you know you make it you make it and if you don't i think it doesn't leave room for regret because yeah. regret is just i'm telling you it's the worst feeling like you shouldn't in anything right that's why i tell my clients go on that date don't regret it later <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know i'm like if you don't like her it's fine <laughs> you know so that's something i would say to um all entrepreneurs i think women are really sort of there's enough platforms now there's so much talk about this um as you know we did a talk even yesterday and i was so impressed by like this you know young woman right who had everything together and i'm just like wow you're so good at interviewing people you should do it professionally so there's there's so many platforms uh, that are talking about how just having more women in the workspace could really impact the economy in a good way absolutely you know and vivek like small companies are providing employment they're providing different things to do like 10 years ago did my colleague know that matchmaking was a professional choice you thought only aunties sitting in like you know 50 year old aunties sitting in like a home do this on the side you didn't think right yeah. so it's it's really it's really uh, wonderful to to do be able to live your dreams and again like i have so many female co-founder friends who have you know really scaled heights i think it's inspiring instead of and in general i think entrepreneurs instead of bringing each other down 
we should be lifting each other up you know um i never hesitate to recommend anybody or anything without saying oh no how is this of benefit to me it's just you know it's i meet such wonderful people every day that i uh, you know like i'm meeting someone tomorrow who who does uh, medical tourism very very young person and she's like covid has totally killed my business because how do you know someone who wants to be treated for autism how do they fly here you know what is the so it's it's just um, you know we're all in this together absolutely right which is why if you need help ask for it you know write to people i think uh, i've had lovely mentors all my life which is why i could make it you know to where i am today is because you've had someone to help guide you right and i think what you're doing is fantastic vivek i mean i was looking at your blog as well and looking at the you know the 10 tips to make your business thrive and stuff like that and it's it's amazing that there's so much we don't know and we have to keep learning and and what you're really doing to spread that message is great because it's it's a morale booster right you absolutely. really feel like yeah yeah absolutely so thank you for having us hey thank you so much and uh, it's been really uh, a pleasure and an inspiration for me and uh, i hope to see what you and uh, self coffee do in the future and uh, i'll be so seeing much. that with you thank you so much thank you so much take care good night yeah. all right so that was nena hiranandani i loved speaking to her you guys have seen how passionate she is how humble and down to earth a person can be that's why self coffee has scaled the heights they have right so that's the whole purpose of the smb talks we want to meet real good people so next three episodes i'm going to take a detour detour so i'm going to be bringing two top influencers in customer experience and one influencer from social set so let's look at all that in this july see you all soon stay safe thank you so much for joining me today and uh, take care of yourself